Listen, after the meeting, come on down. Let me get that. All right. I think we're ready. Microphones on. Please. Yep. Open the meeting. Good evening. Welcome to the Board of Selectmen's meeting for Thursday, February 2nd, 2017. Please rise. All together now, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which stand one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Opening comments, Vice Chair Enzo. Uh, well, first I want to say go Patriots, Sunday, keep my fingers crossed. And secondly, uh, I'd like to thank the um, open, uh, well, not the Open Space Committee, but SWIM, Vi Paddock and her crew, um, and the uh, Preservation Trust uh, for purchasing the, uh, the lot on Forbes Road. It's a huge asset to the town. I'm thankful that they bought it. And um, it's going to remain as open space. And they're going to be responsible for tearing the building down and uh, taking care of it. So, very pleased mm -hmm. with the Preservation Trust. Thank that's you. Very, very, that's perfect. Exactly what we wanted. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, turned out good. T, do you have any? No, all set. Thanks. All set. I just want to say yes. The uh, the the abandoned houses. Uh, there was a. Uh, Six of them. Five. Six of them. Six of six. That's right. The numbers are six. When we uncovered those those abandoned houses, we went out and checked, and then there were fire actually fire traps, and they were very very tough shape. So we've got not only those six houses that have been abandoned, and on the rolls for the last ten or twelve years, they have finally reaped some benefits, and we've got them either sold. Um, rebuilt, knocked down, and that was huge uh, for all the inspectors, police, fire, public works, um, building inspector, health officer, and wire and plumbing. They all worked together in a joint meeting with me, and we uh, took care of that problem, and it was very, very well done. And I appreciate Jeff's follow-up and to stay on top of that with town council and his team, too. Dan, it was... Uh, I, I, I meant to say thank you very much. I also want to thank Enzo, I failed to mention. He worked very extremely hard on the femur uh, lots and the size and the dimensions and we uh, reaped, uh, I think it was 56 homes that uh, got a better deal from this flood insurance. And sometimes that flood insurance is misleading because basically the flood insurance, you could go on, I think I remember, Someone, uh, we were paying a thousand, two thousand, that went up to twelve thousand. And uh, the, ma the national, the max payout is only two hundred fifty thousand, which was, uh, which is kind of deceiving. But uh, thanks to, thank you to you, it was a great job, and I'm glad you submitted the report. You accepted the report. Okay, we got a busy agenda, gentlemen. I'll, I'll, I'll entertain a motion or approve. The prior minutes of January 19, uh, 2017, uh, the executive session for the 19th, 125-17, uh, the uh, Board of Selectmen in the fire station uh, uh, assessment. Can still move. Motion's been made. Is there a second? I'll second it. Motion's been second. Discussion? Uh, just that um, I'd like to speak to the town that uh, I made an objection to the uh, any fire station um, that has to do with the public safety building will not pass by me. Um, I think I've been saying it since September, but I'll reiterate it until it doesn't happen. Thank you. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor, single by saying aye. 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 Motion carries. This time of the uh, on the board of selectmen, we have a citizens forum. If anyone would like to uh, come up and speak to the board, address the board on any subject matter, I ask you to please come to the center of the, the hall where there's a microphone and give us your name and address, and then uh, we can hear whatever you like to hear. 
Good evening, Mr. Chairman. How are you? Thanks for coming. Yes. Hi, my name is uh, Shannon Bianchi. I live at 14 Harborview Road uh, in the hot. Um, I'm here to show my objection to the open space and recreation master plan um, and the fire station and the Coast Guard thing simply from the sense of I disagree with ad hoc committees feeding you all this information. I feel like those committees should be set up more properly. Uh, I've detailed a letter to you guys. I've shared my letter with uh, the town clerk and with Mr. Children. Um, I'm waiting a response from town council and I'll get back to you guys in a couple weeks. I just wanted to come and put a face to the name and say thank you very much for listening. What are you getting to back to the Board of Selectmen in a couple of weeks? What's that about? Um, Mr. Children and uh, Council has 14 days to respond to my complaint against the Open Spaces and Recreation Master Plan Committee. What's the complaint about? Uh, that it was not established in the proper manner. Uh, none of the, did I sent you a letter on this. The Selectmen had a, a letter it was dropped off a few days ago. But. I've been busy for the last week. I haven't seen that yet. Yeah, I sent okay. you an email outlining the process. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. I also sent you a letter oh, a, a no, year ago I don't know, about this. Oh, oh, oh. Only one speaks. Okay. And when I speak, no one else speaks. Okay? okay. You got that? I understand. Uh, I don't understand. It's a great committee. Hmm. A great committee. I don't understand. I don't, I, I don't, I'm not here to disrespect their work. Okay, I understand no, no, no. that they've put a lot into it. All right. Okay. Uh, write a letter to us, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Anything else? Anyone else? All right. Can I just... Excuse me. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I don't see it on the agenda, but I just wanted to let everybody know that uh, <clears throat> we appointed Masha Duvall on the FEMA committee. And um, she's going to be a great asset to us. Uh, she's a retired lawyer. She's perfect for the committee. I, I touch base with her almost every day. So I'm just, I just want to make sure that we, because I don't see it on the agenda anywhere. So yeah, no. she's being sworn in uh, probably tomorrow, I hope. You didn't and, put uh, that on the yeah. agenda? Oh, good. No, that's okay. It was a last minute thing, so. Um, oh, what a great person she is. She's great. Yes, she is. So Not as a witch. That's so. good. Absolutely great. Great appointment is. Okay. Um, the town administrator's report is next. We have the fire chief here tonight to talk about a few items that uh, we have on the agenda. Um, EMS billing, uh, write-off policy, uh, ambulance enterprise, and the ocean rescue boat, which is a potential article. So if Mike, if you could come either to the mic or have a seat at the end there. Sure. Well, you might want to, don't be get too close, Mike, you know. you. you know. What do you want to talk for us, Mike? Taking them in the order that you have on your agenda, the EMS billing rates and in collaboration with that, the write-off policy. When I met with this board the other week with the budget presentations, I gave you a proposal on revising our billing structure, billing rates, and incorporating into that process and policy a formal write-off policy for those in financial need of consideration on their ambulance bills. Um, what this billing rate proposal does is it takes the existing system, which is more, it's referred to as an a la carte system, where you bill for each type of service that's provided during the transport, and it bundles it all up into set fees. And those set fees are more in alignment with what the Medicare and insurance companies reimburse at. So there's less difference between the reimbursement and the actual billing. What's Medicaid pay for? What do they pay for? They pay a base, bundled base rate and mileage. How much is that? Uh, 2016 Medicare rates for ALS, $7.24 a mile. BLS rate is $401.35. ALS 1, which is a standard ALS transport, 476.61. And ALS 2, which is more intensive treatments, 689.82. And the reason the ALS rates are part of this 
is when we work with our ALS partner, we do the tran they get in the back of our ambulance, we do the transport. By federal regulation, the transporting service has to do the billing for the entire call. So we bill at the ALS rate, they bill us a uh, stipend for providing the ALS service. And then as you go further back into the packet, it explains out the financial hardship proposal. There's 11 points to the policy. Um, it, it's pretty much if you call up our billing agency, request the form, complete the form, and submit it, the hardship will be approved. Is there a report in here from the, uh, the billing company on, on what we did? I had passed that along to the town administrator previously, and that was forwarded to you, you I believe. That? I don't have it here. You were forwarded that in an email, so um, I is can it, get you another copy. Is it Comstar? Are you done with Comstar? Pro, we're finished with Comstar. We're utilizing Pro EMS Solutions. They're out of Cambridge. I'm concerned about people not able to pay. Right, and I understand that, and that's why if you go to the very last page, right. this process here. No, I saw, the, I saw the form they have to fill out. It's a lot of work for an elderly man, a person. Can certainly help them. If they want to come down to the station or call me and I'll go to them. A lot, a lot, of, them can't, them. A lot of them can't walk or drive down. They, they That's why I said them. that they can call me, I'll come help them complete the paperwork. How about if we make that a board of selectment decision? Richie. <clears throat> I, 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 uh, we can do that. I, I just, I, I'm, I'm for the concerned. I didn't get the, I didn't, I, you know, we started when the Zamons thing came up. We want to make sure the people, you know, uh, they well, can't afford to pay. Well, for, for, you know. first of all, guys, it, you're dealing with HIPAA regulations. You know, the person, it's against the law to know people's names and stuff. So no, I, no, no, having no. him take care of it is not a bad thing. Oh, no, I, I, don't, I, don't, I, I no. don't see why we should get involved. Do you remember how many people that that couldn't afford to have the ambulance ride? I don't. It was a small number, and uh, is it anything in excess of a hundred? Anything within excess of a hundred? Uh, excuse me. It's an automatic write-off for anything less than a hundred, yeah. which usually will cover the Medicare copays. Medicare requires a twenty percent copay. So we don't have that, that. Usually covers that. We don't have that in the book yet. Not in that, this book, but I can provide that is, it to you. That's line number eight yeah. on the sheet. So how many? So since July 1st, when the new billing company took over, and I'm sorry, I don't have that sheet in front of me that had been passed along July previously. July 1st of this of, year? Of 2016. 2016, so it's last year. July, July 1st, 1st of, so for six months, yeah. approximately $7,500 was written off in billings. So what's in the ambulance ride? Is how much, what's it cost, 400 someone? The Medicare rate is 400. Our current rates are listed on the second page. A BLS transport is $1,205. What's the, uh, DLS? What, what is that? Per mile. Nahant's ambulance. Nahant's ambulance? Nahant's ambulance. Instead of saying DL, say Nahant's ambulance. Yes. Because you have another ambulance comes over. The paramedics, they usually back you up, right? The, the paramedics come over, we work together. Right, and, no, no. And it's no, one no. bill that goes out. I understand. So. We wrote up $75 last year. So how many people? $7,500. $7,500 yes. you wrote off. That's, That's quite a few people. In six months. In six months? Yes. So you're talking quite a, bit, quite a few people that couldn't afford to pay. Am I that, right? that have expressed that they were unable to pay, correct. That's and they were, how many were waived, do you remember? Well, that includes waived. That called, okay. Written off and waived okay. fall under the same category. They can't afford to pay, basically. Right. If they call up the billing company and say, I've received this bill, I don't have the financial resources to pay it, the billing company will send them a form. If they can return the form or if they need assistance returning the form, we can help them. They submit the form and the balance of the account is waived. What did the, what did the, town, <clears throat> what did the town collect last year um, in ambulance revenue? Last year, the town collected in gross revenue, approximately $86,000. I believe that figure is, let me, uh, and that, that, that goes with the enterprise. Yeah. It's gonna be in an enterprise fund. A different Correct. sheet. Yep. Now, to pay for the ambulance, which is a good thing, so. Yep. 86,000. Less, less. Uh, 86,000, yep. It would be less uh, um, expenses. 
Correct. Yeah. Okay. I think that's a great idea. I back it 100 percent. Unfortunately, up until this point, there has not been a formal policy right. for write-offs, and this just formalizes the policy. So do you want to go through the enterprise and then also? Well, first I would ask the board to consider making a motion and approving the revised billing system and rates and along with that the write-off policy as presented. It's no different than when Comstock had it. I mean, it doesn't really look that much different to me. Why did you make I'm sorry, it which, the write-off policy? Well, no, the, the whole package. Package, really. I mean, they, I mean, they, they used to. Uh, forgive uh, bills also. They did, yes. But but there was no policy that backed that up. Right. What is this comparison sheet? Is this Naha $50, 1650 BLS, ALS 1, 2150, and 3150 ALS 2? Right. Those are the proposed bundled rates. That Those are the rates that I'm asking you to consider approving this evening. And if you look on the left, it shows the individual rates that are bundled now in that. Uh, Say what? If you look at the left side, it says current. And then you look at the right side, it says proposed bundle. So he, the, the current you itemize. He's looking at the comparison chart. Oh, oh, I see. So if you go to the page before that comparison chart. Sorry. So Medicare rates are what? 689, 476. That's a big yeah. difference. That's a big difference. It is. Huh? It is a big difference. <laughs> For Medicare and what you are charging. Yes. What you like to charge. That's right? correct. And what we currently charge. And you currently charge. We charge uh, 1650, so it's. On average, our current BLS ambulance transport, the billing is approximately $1,400. But you're, now you're going to what? Now we'd be going to $1,650 plus $50 a mile. Plus 50, so it's $1,700. Well, so, yeah. I mean, depending on the mileage, it's typically about eight miles to get from anywhere in the haunt to either of the two hospitals we typically go to. Well, how many hospitals? So about $2,000. You take them to Salem Hospital, right? You take them to Salem or Union Hospital. They're equidistant. Well, union's going out of business. In a couple of years, they will. <laughs> Sad state of affair. My, my only question was the uh, 1650. Yes. For the, for the Nahan ambulance was in the higher bracket, if you yes. bracketed them. Uh, just questioning how you got 1650. I mean, 1400 yep. staying at 1400, now that I know it was 1400, mm -hmm. it might have been better, but. Well, that 1400 included the mileage. That was inclusive of the mileage charge. But the Medicare rates only go up to 689. That's correct. But when, when you bill Medicare and Med Medicare approves a transport, mm -hmm. they only approve that amount. You're not allowed to bill the difference between their approved amount and what you charge. Medicare has never paid. The hospital bills are the same way. They pay so, a third so if way. we round numbers off and we say that we bill $1,000 and Medicare will approve $500, the most we can collect on that account is $500 by law. I, I, I'd like to think this went over. I, I just got a feeling. My, my, my instincts are telling me that the poor people, the people that really are the elderly are getting affected by this. I want to, before we vote on this, I need, we need to go through this tooth and nail, and I'd like to have all the facts in front of me, too. I want to know exactly a recap. I don't have to know anyone's names, but I do want to know the facts, the numbers, the calls, the cost, what was billed, what was not billed, how many people were involved, numbers. I just need numbers. I mean, for jumping up here, you know, you're talking Medicare's only going to pay 700 bucks, right? 689, and you're going to charge uh, almost uh, 1400. Th there's a big drop. I don't know what the difference is. I mean, we're not... <laughs> That's what Medicare pays. No, That's what I understand, Medicare but pays. I don't want to make money on the backs of the elderly who actually need an ambulance, and I don't want them afraid not to call for an ambulance. 
in the town of Manhattan. What is, what is our, we, we, we're paying the firemen and the, we've got to, you know. If I may, the elderly who are on Medicare, the most we can collect off of that bill is what Medicare approves. So if, they're, if the Medicare rate is $489, that's the most we can collect. What about Medicaid? Medicaid is even less than that, and it's the same rules. Okay, Whatever so they approve, that's the most. So we the can elderly collect. people that the el I think every elderly person is on Medi at least on Medicaid. They or have Medicare. to be Medicare. They have to be. So, and the I think they're all covered. The twenty, the twenty percent that's from eighty percent to one hundred percent. That twenty percent, if they had um, AARP, did that pay that, for any? Yes, the secondary insurance will cover right. that other twenty percent, and that's only twenty percent of the Medicare amount. Yeah, I still like to have. I, like I think to take. I like to take some time on this. I think before we change it, okay. there's no hurry. Why are we in a hurry to change it? I mean, we just. It, it just feeds right into the discussion on the enterprise account. On the right. enterprise account. The enterprise account is to pay for the ambulance. Yes. Pay, yes. To, to capture all costs. I think the ones that it's going to hurt. I, I, I don't Honestly, want I think the ones that it's going to hurt are the young people that don't have health insurance. Well, you can. You, 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 they're you, the ones that are going to. It's not going to hurt the elderly at all. I don't think. Because uh, they're going to. They're going to pay either Medicare or Medicaid is going to pay their bill. Well, and it's going to be the, the the people that. And there's an awful lot of them out there that don't have health insurance. I know somebody recently had a, an ambulance ride, and the bill was eighteen hundred dollars. And Medicaid turned it down completely. Medicaid turned it down. Medicaid, boom. So in that so, situation, Mike, that's interesting. That would have been no collection. And that's what I want to if, see. If, if it's declined it. by Medicare, yeah. if the person wasn't covered, then it's not covered by Medicare rates. If there's a different reason for it being declined it would still settle at the Medicare rates. And then that person could very easily call up and request a... I'd like to see all these records. I, I, mean, I just, you know, no one's ever checked in this. And the, uh, the billing companies, they have a tendency to bill, uh, especially the elderly, you know? They get these bills and they, then they make some phone calls and probably scare the hell out of the poor elderly person or lady. I, I, I you know... I'd like to check it all. I want, I, and this has to be, I want to check this. If you mind, we will put it on for sure. a couple of weeks. Yeah, and, and I'll resend the material again. Yeah. Uh, how do you feel about the write-off policy, which is a, a traditional policy? The write-off, I got to go through that. I, I yeah. the, the write-off, I, I don't have the problem with the policy and the amount. I just got to make sure that it's going to be easier for the individuals, the elderly, to be able to fill out these forms. This is a big form. Um, you got 11 points. That, that's not the form. That's the policy. No, I understand okay. it's a policy, right. but do you have a form in here? No, they have a very standard form, name, address, account no, no. number, and so well, on. Do you think the form should be in here? I will very happily get that form for See, you. See, this, this is what I'm missing. I like to get everything all one under me when I'm looking at this stuff. You know? this, was, this was just kind of sprung on us. We didn't. Yeah, I this didn't. came in. I, this, this was. Uh, yeah, this was I, actually brought up at the last budget meeting, uh, right. but that's fine. I think it's, it's good for us to see all the. Well, I wasn't here for the last budget meeting, all right? I no, no it, this was presented to you when we met downstairs. Yeah. With downstairs? The budget I don't remember this. Yes. But, but that's I remember, fine. I remember the, the, uh, the write off policy, which is fine. I have no problem with it, but I just. We got to figure a way, and we got to ask a couple of seniors. I want to see the form. That they, ha they have to fill out and sign, am I correct? Yes. Yeah. What, sometimes I, I, you know. what I'd like to see is, um, if I did my quick math right, is the percent of the income of 86K that was written off, a percentage around 12 or 13%. Um, to me, that's pretty good. That's, that's reasonable. But if you could get a percent of the other towns, perhaps, what they write off, mm -hmm. that would have to, I, I'd like to know that. Thank you. And Mike, we should find comparables. Um, if you're using like a Lynn or a Swamp's Guide, it may not be comparable. Right, right, right. Yeah. You know, a lot of these names would be. Yeah. yeah. Mm, that's who I would utilize. Yeah, we've got meetings Definitely with the thing. FinCom and everyone else come the next two or three weeks. So uh, whenever you're ready, we'll put it on for two weeks for the select convene. But if you have it earlier, we can, we can review it on one of these FinCon mites. Okay. We've got to meet with the FinCom. Is that right, Mr. Chairman? We're gonna, Monday night, we're going to start with you? Oh, I'm a dying to get at you. That's good. It's mutual. Yes, I understand. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Mike, what's next? All right. Uh, the other part of the presentation 
involves the proposal for an EMS enterprise account. Um, what this does is it takes all of the revenue that we've just been talking about, generated by the ambulance runs, put it, puts it into account that is used in the same concurrent year to offset the expenses of running the ambulance. So you see before you a breakdown, a budget for the account, which pulls line items from the existing operating budget over to the EMS enterprise and makes it an even swap between anticipated revenue based on the town accountant's figures and what comes out of the town budget to compensate for that. So yes, on the revenue side, you won't be seeing the ambulance revenue on the town side. But at the same time, that same dollar figure is coming out of the budget, the operating budget, and would be paid for directly out of the receipts. The other component of that is it allows you to not only justify um, covering all the costs of providing the service, but any mo surplus money that is in addition to the expenses for that fiscal year is certified as free cash just the way certified free cash is done for the rest of the town. And then that can be rolled over year after year and used for the purchase of EMS-related capital equipment, whether it's a new ambulance, new stretcher, new AED defibrillators, whatever is needed. So, so I, looking at this, it's approximately, if I'm reading this correctly, it's the, um, the revenue would be about $23,000 total, because you, if you, after you take your expenses out. Yes. Yes, I had to figure out where you were going with that. Yes. <laughs> okay, that's after, so, the, so oh, the, that's after the principal. So the surplus money, that would be free cash, you're saying? All right, so in other words, okay, so it's going to help pay the, am the new ambulance down that we just purchased. Correct. Which we're going to get today, right? Did it come in today? Tomorrow. It, it, the, our new ambulance is being delivered tomorrow morning. They're Good. leaving North Attleboro at 7 a.m. Good. Okay. So kind of cutting to the chase, this transaction creates a budget neutral impact. Um, all it's really doing is pulling out the details that were funded before um, with some of the revenues to balance it off. And it sets aside much like the water and sewer enterprises and it runs on its own, pays for itself. It shows a true accountability of uh, the costs. Okay. Um. I move that the Board of Selectmen place on the warrant an article to see if the town will vote to adopt an enterprise fund under the provisions of the General Laws, Chapter 44, Section 53F and a half for the operation of an ambulance service. Motion has been made. Is second. There a second. Second. Discussion on the motion. Boy, wait, wait uh, I see him. I see him. I can't uh, miss him. Okay. I, uh, you know, I think the ambulance, I think the enterprise fund is a good deal. I really do. Um, because it'll separate it out and um, it'll mm -hmm. it'll pay for the ambulance. So, okay, T. No, I'm, I'm with it. I think yes, can I have your name, please, sir? <laughs> Ken Carangelo, 81 Rollo Road. It's, it's kind of a bad neighborhood, but um, it is a tough neighborhood. It is. Uh, so let me, just a couple of clarifying questions, and and uh, you know we're we've agreed to meet with the FinCom and the Board of Slotman are meeting on Monday to review this in some detail, the entire budget, not just this. A um, couple of things w with regard to the enterprise fund. Does that uh, does that take over all of the costs involved with the ambulance, or a portion? We, we don't have the numbers, so I'm not sure what, what you mean by that. Right now, the current proposal takes over almost all the costs. There was one line item that, for the first year, we're trying to leave in the operating budget just to see how the revenue falls out with the new billing company to make sure that the enterprise fund can fully support that additional line item. And what was that line item? That line item covers the EMT stipends for the career firefighters. So the per is that the only personnel cost not included in the enterprise fund? The, the only EMS related personnel costs. So any callback overtime or EMS training overtime is captured in the fund. Okay, and what about just the base Thank you. Um, the base costs for the staffing of the ambulance? That's the staffing of the fire department. That's the base cost of the staffing of the fire department. So is any portion of that in the enterprise fund? No, because that's the staffing of the fire department. 
well, isn't part of the point of setting up the enterprise fund to effectively capture all of the true costs that are in that enterprise? The, the true costs of providing the service, we, we're, we're providing the fire service also. And it's, oh, it, it's it, concurrent service. And it's also much like water and sewer. Yeah. Um, water and sewer um, co-mingles with DPW. And so we don't have a, a pure line. So this is an attempt to get as close as possible. Uh, over time, it can be refined, but uh, right now, it's a, it's the closest possible. Yeah. I, I, I again, we'd have to. Uh, one question, I guess, and a, a request from the in joint with the uh, jointly with the chairman of the finance committee here. Request: Could we not vote to put this? Could you please not vote to put this on the article until we've collectively had a chance to look at this in more detail? There, there's some, there are some things we discussed last year in the cycle that are not covered here. And there was a significant gap, even with the billing. The, the change in billing, as we discussed it last year, would only take up a portion of the shortfall. It didn't come close to covering the entire cost. So it seems if we're not, if we're not covering the entire cost of your revenue, and we're not even including all of the costs, the concurrent ones and, and whatever else is left out, that's it, it, it's still clouding things. It's still not really capturing the, the true value of the enterprise. So it, I guess the point is, and I'm speaking here on behalf of... Uh, I concur wholeheartedly. <laughs> Chairman Brendan Ward of what's your address? 24 Little Nahant Road. 24 <laughs> Little Nahant Road. Um, uh, again, just a few more minutes at least of, of looking at this in detail would be helpful. Well, we, we, can, uh, we, can, we, we can leave that article out yeah. by the time, and we don't have to finish the article this week. I, I'd like to hear what you guys have to say because sure. I think that, um, you know, the, the FinCom does an awful lot of work, the volunteers, mm -hmm. and um, I, I want to, you know, the, this is, I'd like to see what the, the, the projections are also. I, I, I mean, I want to hear what they have to say. What they're, say, what they're saying, last year's numbers right. did not add up. Uh, that's why I want to hear that. Will we talk I, about know, it Monday night? I mean, we, we can. I think the one point that we would like to make is that in the Water and Sewer Enterprise Fund, there's a large allocation for all of the personnel from the DPW. We allocate that through. We allocate through the benefits. We allocate through the retirement funds. None of those are included. So this is absolutely not an appropriate enterprise fund in terms of evaluating what the cost of the services because it ignores the largest piece of the cost, which is the labor and the benefits. Right. Okay. We'll wait. I wonder, if you should, I wonder if we should have the fire department set up a separate, you know, for the ambulance, a separate, you know, personnel ambulance, you know. Well, let me go ahead and run the numbers in a comparable manner to water and sewer just so we can see how it would look if you were to draw everything out. Okay. Well, all right. I, 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 okay. I, that's fine. Motion to wait. We're going to, yeah, motion to rescind. We're, 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 we're going to rescind the motion here. Uh, so we'll hold off on this, Chief, okay? Okay. Um, then the last one is we have a potential warrant article for a ocean rescue boat. Well, before we get into that, hang on. I want to congratulate, Chief. I want to know who did uh, you received a, a grant for $1,970 for uh, student awareness and fire education? Safe in 2295 for senior safe grants. That is correct. Now, um, we, who who who's, who uh, who wrote this grant up in the? That would be it? firefighter Frank Papalardo. Frank Papalardo oh, wrote wow. this grant. Um, we worked together on it. He he did the yeoman's work on it. He submitted it. He gets the credit for it, and he will be implementing the program. Um, it's been many years since Nahant has been receiving this grant money. And we hope to be able to put together a comprehensive and formal safety education program, not only for the Johnson School, but also for the senior center and the elderly housing projects around town. That's very good. I told Mr. Firefighter Papalo that was excellent. Well done. Well do. I'd like to write him and get him a letter. Same with uh, you know, he's, uh, these uh, firefighters are down there. they going above what they need to do, and it's really coming through. Now the rescue boat. At the request of this board, uh, the harbor master did some investigating mm -hmm. on potential new ocean rescue surface vessels. Um, we've submitted for your review several quotes 
ranging from 91,000 up to, forgive me if I don't remember the number off the top of my head, $122,000 from one vendor. Another vendor is 134,000 up to 164,000. You have pictures of the boat? Right here. Yeah, they're, they're in your packet. Oh, they're in the packet. Yeah. Okay. What do you think, Chief? Well, if we're able to put this onto the warrant, I think having a substantial surface vessel such as this would be an absolute asset to the fire department, the operations, ocean rescue, and other potential operations. They do have the option of putting a fire pump on it, which would enable us to adequately provide service for, say, one of our lobstermen if their boat were to catch fire offshore. <clears throat> How does the, uh, we have a, um, a zodiac, correct, now? We have a 14-foot zodiac, correct. How does that do in the summer time, uh, spring, summer, and fall for uh, um, water rescues? It does okay. It's very limited in its capacity, size-wise and weight-wise. It has a single motor. Um, its best asset is that it's mobile. We can move it around. We can launch it from any location. <coughs> you, 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 and you also have another you, the hot ocean rescue equipment needs totaling $54,238 plus roughly $140,000 you want to put on the town warrant which will round it off to 200000 which will really snowball into about a $300,000 bill after maintenance and moorings and uh, you know and I don't, and, and this, I don't see anywhere where there's training, wintertime training. I mean, we might have three or four winter incidents, and I can't see the, I can't see paying 300,000, you know, shelling out 300 grand at the end of the day for something that, I mean, we can't even take care of our own infrastructure, never mind a boat. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move not to include this in the town warrant. I'll second that. Discussion? No, sir. If I may, if I, you will. You, you, let me know when I want to, when you let the chairman jump in. <laughs> There's been a motion made. It's been seconded. Second. Discussion? Uh, I recall, I haven't missed many meetings. As a matter of fact, I haven't missed any. I don't recall stating that I wanted this here. I would like to see us talk about an ocean rescue boat, take a few meetings, discuss it. The last I heard was you were sitting over there and it was, well, you should get a boat. It, there was no vote, there was no discussion. Um, I didn't get on this board to come here and see an ocean rescue boat for $150 million. So I'm, I'm, I'm just, if we talk about this, we set it up, maybe some other time, but as of right now, I'm no way. No, I understand, and if I may, it was mentioned very briefly in our prior discussions, and then I did receive a request from the chairman of the board to come forth with these quotes and information on actual boats. And, and similarly, uh, and similar, and the, equipment. The, the equipment yeah. for the 54000 was And the also equipment requested. for 54000 was yeah. this was requested I at asked, the prior I, meeting. I asked the chief yeah. to come up with the appropriate um, monies you need to create an ocean rescue team. Right now, we don't have, um, I mean, the, the, the Harbor Master's boat is, how old is that boat, Robbie? 1999. I mean, I mean. It's out of service now, too. Well, the, well the, 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 that was just for the Harbor. We, we, we've never had, a, we've never had a unit. Well, we've had uh, some rescue when those two professors died off 40 steps, but, uh, we put some money into that, but it was just kind of like, you know, we had some repelling off the rocks and we had some training like that and they've had some other training, but I, I just, for an ocean rescue squad, I mean, did you get any prices from the Coast Guard of training? The Coast Guard currently is not offering training to fire departments. I did speak with the fire chief down in Hull, mm -hmm. uh, which is also surrounded by water. Uh, they have a Coast Guard station there that shuts down during the winter. The Coast Guard does not have any boats there. Um, 
They have worked in conjunction with the Coast Guard in the past on some training. He actually gave me, and I have to get the actual contact information, a resource for the environmental police who will come out and help us provide some training. In addition, I've reached out to two ocean rescue training companies. Um, I spoke, I had reached out two weeks ago. I actually spoke with one of the companies yesterday, and I'm awaiting the information from them, but they're more than happy to come sit down and meet with us and provide us training. I No, no cost or anything associated with that? Uh, their current cost on their website, which is about four or five years old, is, <clears throat> excuse me, $650 per person for the training. Again, well, um, I, 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 we had voted to suspend, Richie, the, the, the whole winter. Um, no, 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 I, I understand, but I, I just want to finish. Let me finish, Mike. Okay. Um, you know, I was thinking, you know, when I was coming up and I saw this ocean rescue, and have you got an approval? And, 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 and this should be a separate unit. Like, they're going to have to be a siphon set up for ocean rescue, like an EMT, EMT one, two, three, and paramedic. There's, there's X amount of dollars in the, in, the, in, the, in the contract for EMT, am I correct? Yes, and for ocean rescue. And then if he goes up further to uh, paramedic, he gets, right? So this ocean rescue would have to be a separate unit, right? Have to be a separate unit, and there's some sort of, we gotta get some concessions from the fire union too. Did you get a vote with the, on the, or the fire union to proceed with an ocean rescue? It, it's already in their contract. They they receive a stipend. They do, ocean but rescue? ocean rescue. They do. They do. They, they, do. they do. But in customarily, the, over the over the years, we've never had a winter ocean rescue. Yeah. That. Yeah, we just. I, I would think that you know that would um, really take precedent so in their contract because they didn't expect. They don't expect it. And again, I don't have a. They don't have a. I don't think they have a problem with it. I think that training and the equipment. I see you have a list of equipment that you need. That's fifty-four thousand dollars. But I don't see anywhere where there's training involved in this. Five thousand dollars. I don't think is going to cut it. You know, I mean, again, over a, a course of a year, year and a half, it, it. Then they might. You might introduce that to them later. Right. My original request was substantially higher than that for the training salaries. In addition, we, uh, the town administrator- You had $1,900 in your budget for training. Well, it's 55,000, I think, somewhere. Uh, it, no, that's for the, those are for the supplies. But anyway, you two voted already to suspend- For the winter, yeah. For the winter. And what happened there? What's going on so there? So training is, <clears throat> excuse me, training is ongoing in the fire department? No, 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 no. Have you and the chief got together and have you, where are the signs that we asked to have you made up? Signs for? For the, for the uh, kite flyers, the people who go down there and tell them we can't, we're not going to rescue them. I just received a message from the member of the organization. He's got the signs, so we can install those now. Oh, okay. Yeah. You got a copy? Did you get a copy? Is that the one with the... I, I sent you that copy that shows a, a, yeah. a flyer. Uh, yeah. it, it's a nice sign. Okay. And so he's, they've actually, I'm very happy to hear, hear that they're willing to pay for it. They're willing to pay for it? For the signs, yeah. And so we'll install them, they pay for it. It's, it's a great collaboration. So right now the Board of Selectmen has already voted not to proceed, correct, with Ocean yeah. Rescue? My, my concern was, was liability on the, 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 the uh, men's part because, you know, getting one of them hurt without the proper equipment could really put the town in jeopardy. So. So the, the chief, and, and I think that eventually you can introduce it to them a year, year and a half down the road. Um, it would have to be contractual with them, I think, because uh, this all started, again, this all started back in when those two people drowned. Billy Waters started, it was a good thing. Then it, it filtered over into the fire department. And um, I, I don't even know who's in charge of it now. The fire chief. Okay. And we have here with us some of the founding members. Yeah, I know. I've I seen that occur. No, no, I, I see them all there. I, 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 you know, the, you, 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 you're talking to the wrong. Uh, Mr. Chairman, there's a motion on the floor. No, no, I understand the motion here, but hold on, hold on. Uh, I, so you voted already to cancel? Just for the winter until they get 
it's training. I mean, if any one of these guys wants to get up and talk about it, so cancel cancel the training of the ocean. No, rescue. the training they can train. They can train as much as they want. Well, if they don't have the equipment, how can they train? So Again, they what, have what, has, some equipment. what has happened is the chief has um, continually tr uh, been training them. So a training happened last weekend. It is without any water entry, and so it's part of his ongoing training process. What was the training last weekend? It was the training last weekend. We did a low slope rescue utilizing um, strokes basket pulleys. We did inside the fire station, harnesses, things like that. Things that are applicable not only to ocean rescue, but other types of rescue also. Inside the fire station? Yes. Yep. So it's under safe conditions. Okay, you had something, uh, uh, you've only got one more shot, this is it. <laughs> Can I pay extra? Oh, uh, two, two clarifying questions, please. Uh, what does Hull do for a winter rescue? What does, well, I know, that I don't know, and the Coast Guard station is closed, so. I, I can answer that for you. Okay. Um, I had a very extensive discussion with the Hull Fire Chief. Um, they have a larger department than we do. They do have an ocean rescue. They actually have three surplus Coast Guard boats, similar to what Marblehead now has, um, as part of their fleet. Those are all put away for the winter. For winter operations, they have a 14-foot Zodiac. Okay. That's, I was going to say, uh, and thank you, Chief. Uh, and does the environmental police offer winter rescue services? Not locally. They come out of Boston, the same as the Coast Guard, and they have much slower boats than the Coast Guard. Okay. Do, does any neighboring town have that capability? The closest that we have that you could consider to be would be Marblehead. They do keep their boat in the water year-round and staff it from the fire station. One of the staffing crews would go down to the boat if needed. And we, we have an agreement with them that should we need to look at deploying, that they would start coming our way to assist. Okay. But they're, they're, again, about 35 to 45 minutes out from us. Okay. And I'm sorry, one more thing. If you mentioned capacity was one of the reasons for needing this, because we've only got the single Zodiac, um, have you considered buying a second Zodiac, which we, we do have a second smaller Zodiac, yeah. a 10 foot Zodiac. That's, um, it's collapsed down, it's inflatable with an air bottle in a very short amount of time. Gee. Hi. Yeah, thanks. Uh, I just before uh, my good friend Eddie gets up. Yes, well, you uh, want to let I Eddie just, speak for Eddie. You want to speak for us, Eddie? Eddie, oh. come on up. Well, I just, I just want to say that, you know, again, the other day, uh, Dylan called me. Dylan's the, um, the, the kite surfer guy. Mm -hmm. And he called the fire department to let them know that there was a kite blowing towards Swampscott. And not to send the ambulance, not to send the fire department, because that kite, it, it only contained a kite. There was nobody on there. My concern is that it was blowing pretty good. And if you launched that Zodiac, if he wasn't there, to call the fire department to say there was nobody on that, Swamps could have already had their guys out looking with binoculars, not in the water. If you sent, if you sent that Zodiac out there, God, I mean, I, I just think that it could have tipped over. I, I think it would have been a disaster. And thank God he was able to call and say, look, don't come. And I know that the fire department, I, I actually was going by them. They were up in Little Nahat with binoculars looking at the kite, blowing towards swamps. And I, I don't think they could find it. But no, we did actually is, find this it. Is, the this reason is the we problem went. that's going to happen. You're going to send these guys out there if it's blowing for a kite, and, and it's happened a couple of times already. And, and if I may, we're not going to send somebody out there for a kite. But you don't we, know We that. went out to investigate. We, we received a phone call from a patron at the Tides, right. or the police did, rather. We have an obligation. We have a duty to respond Absolutely. to investigate. We, we had the prior knowledge of the loose kite. We went and investigated. Swampskit was able to visualize the kite with their binoculars. We identified it as the same description of the kite that was lost, and we all turned around and went home. Okay, but again... I have, I have a question, excuse me. Why didn't you send out the drone you just purchased? Because the drone is currently being serviced to get it compatible to what our needs are. As I explained to you at previous meetings on the drone... A brand new drone, and it has to be serviced already? Not repaired, but 
slightly adapted. I explained that to you at a previous meeting when did you that I was it? holding off on sending it out until we had resolved the drone question. The but that would that? be a perfect use for the drone. Yep. You're, the, you're absolutely the, right. Agreed. That's, I thought, that's what I thought it was for, and now all of a sudden it's not used for a kite. What's, what's wrong with it? The camera that's on it, the thermal camera that's on it, is fixed. So you have to have the drone directly over where you're looking at. This puts a 360, 360 degree gimbal on it that can be controlled remotely. So you can be looking ahead as you're moving towards the situation. And the total cost for this um, configuration is $500. We already have the camera. It, it's just the connection to the drone. So that's going to cost us another $500. $500. And believe it or not, they, they've covered the shipping going back to them and coming back to us. Has anybody trained on, the, on this, by the way? Has, has, has anybody even used it? We have not, because as I stated at a previous meeting, we were waiting on that reconfiguration until the drone issue was settled with the board. I don't remember what previous meeting. I don't remember this. We've, We've had this discussed a couple times at uh, various meetings. We bought, a, we bought a drone that don't work now, and then when we have a kite loose, we can't send the drone out. I think we should just. Um, I think. The, well, I, I think you should return it. That's what I think you should do. And we I'm don't very, have that I'm option. Very serious. Take the drone, put it in the box, and send it back. Get your five grand, and we could pay for some radios or something. Uh, do something. I mean, I, I, I just think that's a disgrace. I always, I always did. As soon as I heard that drone, I go on vacation for a week, and you come back and you buy a drone without our permission. I mean, without authorization, or without even telling us. And that's very, not, very upset about that drone. And that's and now not, all of a sudden you have a kite loose, and we can't send the drone up. We've got to pay for another 500 because the camera is not aligned. Hello? Well, I mean, I mean, this is just absolutely just in our face. They're going to spend another $500? I, 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 you should send that drone back, Jeff. I'm telling you. I mean, here's the finance committee, and they're wondering, where did you get the money from the drone? Five grand. Where'd you, what, where, number, what budget? The, the drone came out of the fire department budget as part of the uh, collaboration with the emergency management and police department. Well, then it came out, it came out, the it came out at the end of the year. I was on the member of the FinCon. <laughs> it came they out at the end of the year. That. They never discussed that last year. And nor do they have to. Um, they have an no, expense. Ha no, not do they have to. It was now, money. What's that mean? It was money you mean that you they wanted to spend. You don't have to discuss the $500, the $5,000 for the drone to the FinCon, and you just go out and buy it, and it came out of the budget? And they didn't know about yeah. it. We didn't know about it. It was at the end of your yes. So I mean, all of a sudden they said, "Gee, what kind of when kind the you, credibility when? of the board of selectmen, town administrator, fire chief comes into question here, spending money without authorization, without the board of selectmen knowing about it." And I, you know, and then I hear that we we've got radios we're missing, and we we don't have radios for every one of the firemen. Did you get radios for everybody? We're currently looking into an increasing our radio stock. That's not what I asked you the last time in front you were in front of me. I understand that. You need those firemen, whether they I consider the callmen, the firemen all in one. They need to be outfitted with radios. If they go into a burning building, they need that radio to save their life. Absolutely, which is why I purchased the additional radios that I did. I purchased but it. But you didn't purchase to the enough for everybody in had. The, you didn't purchase enough for everyone in the in the fire department, am I correct? I you had 18 and you need 23 or 25. Richie, it is up to the department head to actually expend their budgets as they see fit. And oh, so oh, Jeff, that, that, Jeff, that's Jeff, what the Jeff, fire chief Jeff, has Jeff. done. I'm not going to go through that with you, okay? This is something that the Board of Selectmen is concerned about the welfare and the safety of our fire personnel. As and, is and the and fire That's what I'm concerned about. And so is the fire chief. Now, well, I, I, I'm not too sure if he's worried about it, if he, he doesn't have a radio for everyone, but he's got a, 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 a drone. And he bought it when three months ago, and the thing has a, doesn't even work. And we just had a, a, a kite go out, and, and we're going to send somebody out there. Or maybe. Well, I'm thankful. I'm thankful Dylan called. But when when was the drone purchase? When was the actual order? June place? of 2016. June. Okay, June. So that's the end of the year, Jeff. That was the end Correct. of the fiscal year. So exactly. it's five thousand dollars out the window. No, no, not at all. Oh, absolutely. Come on. Not at all. Listen. They, they, then he had to go for a reserve fund transfer to buy a generator that blew up on one of the fire trucks. I mean, they could have used that. Could have been went five thousand of that. Could have went towards that generator. Different the reserve years. fund has n almost nil in it, and okay. we're wasting okay. money on stuff we're like not, this. We're not, we're not, okay, it, it, okay, I'm not going to go into. Okay, what else do you have, Chief? 
I think those guys, the firemen, one of them. Oh, the firemen, yes. Lieutenant. No, firefighter. Firefighter. Ed, Ed Street, 61 Spring Road. Um, I've been with the call department here coming on 21 years. Uh, sitting here and hearing what's going on, I, I can't believe how misinformed you folks are. It's, I find it, it, it's an atrocity. It really is. Uh, first off, I keep hearing firefighter safety, firefighter safety, get more training. The firemen all did uh, firefighter one, two training. We all get certified to become firefighters uh, by the national NFPA standards. The NFPA standards is for firefighters on an engine company. You guys, are pre you guys are preaching firefighter safety. We don't have four guys in an engine company for a house fire, okay? They're more likely to get hurt at a house fire than they are going on the water right now. There's no question in my mind, okay? Um, we're saying ocean rescue, we're saying fire, fire department. There's one and the same. They're not different. Someone gets in trouble, who do you call? You call the fire department. You go water come through your cell, who do you call? You don't call the plumber, you call the fire department, okay? Um, they're one and the same. You know, alien, this does not have that separation anymore. That's crazy. Um, you don't even know they're getting stipend down there that for the ocean rescue. You mentioned it. You were shocked to hear they they actually get into stipends because of the ocean rescue now. Um, are we not uh, prepared for the winter? We are prepared for the winter water. To say we're not equipped for the winter, you're wrong. Absolutely wrong. No question in my mind. You guys are very misinformed on that. We've been 15 years, we've been swimming every year. For 15 years in a row, we've been swimming in the water. We've been in the ice pack. We've been in flax pond through the ice. We've been in beer pond through the ice. We constantly train the cold water. We have the equipment for the cold water. Our boats are small because they have to be portable to get to where they go. The other thing is by saying we can't do it, you're undermining the fire department. You really are. The way we work at a house fire or anything else is an incident commander. He tells you what to do at a house fire. It doesn't come from the mayor. It doesn't come from the board of selectmen. It comes from the incident commander at the fire. Same with a water incident. It's the incident commander. He says whether they go or don't go. And if someone's not comfortable going, they don't have to take that order. They can look the incident commander right in the face and say, I'm not good with that. Uh, they wouldn't have to go. But they just come out and say you can't do it. Because where you're you going with this, if we're going to have a water incident, people are going to be jumping in the water without the equipment on. That's where it's going. Because if I end up down near the wharf and someone's 10, 15 feet out there, I hear the hell ain't going to watch someone drown. That's where you're going with this. So you're really hamstringing this really bad. Another thing I've seen you've done, you brought us back about 18 years in the fire department where you're dividing the department. You really are on this issue. What it should be, it should be at the chief's discretion to set up his SOGs, which he's great at. He's put more SOGs down the pike than any other past fire, fire chief I've worked under here. He's great with his SOPs. He has a lot of stuff in line. Uh, you gotta get it back to where he sets his SOPs and the senior person on scene, that incident commander makes the judgment calls on this. For you guys to sit behind a desk and say we're ill-prepared, we are prepared. Myself, uh, I think four of us are qualified as rescue swimmers for the Coast Guard. We did a course that qualified us for, for that rescue course. I've done additional training myself, but that's myself personally. Um, but I think you're really hamstringing this whole thing. You really are. It's, it, it's, I thought, it nauseates me what I heard here tonight. It really it, it gets to my core. You're very, 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 I still got the floor. You're very misinformed. You guys are very, very misinformed. <laughs> Um, I don't know who's coming in and, and, and throwing things at you who are not prepared. We've done a lot of extensive cold water training. You said training. you're not prepared. And, uh, yeah. I've heard it just now. We don't have the equipment. We're not prepared. We're not trained. Well, we, we are prepared and we are trained. Eddie, not list, across the board. There's a list of equipment right here that he, he says he has to have to do it. To, to replace... We, things get broken, equipment. worn out. And we still have... Still, you go down there, you can put a half a dozen people easy in this cold okay, water. So Here's the other thing is, don't forget... If, just because we go to a call with all the equipment and all the gear doesn't mean we're going to jump in the water because it's a risk worth reward. It's just like a house fire. You can't run into a burning, blazing building if you know the person in there is not viable anymore. That doesn't work that way. It's risk worth re re reward. And like I said, where you're going with this is you're going to see guys, you're going to have someone going, you're afraid someone getting hurt, you're going to have guys going in the water with the gear on now. You get a car, for example, get a car off the guardrail over the causeway, the engine gets down there, no boats coming, what are you going to do? Wait for the Coast Guard to come? Eddie, Eddie, you must have been around. Will you remember the Scott Pack issue? Excuse me? The Scott Pack issue down at the fire department? No, I do not. 25 years ago. That was before me. Well, 20 years ago, they didn't have sufficient Scott Packs. Yep. And the Scott Packs were not replaced, and they were broken. And they couldn't even get refilled. Okay, and I don't know which fireman advised me on it. Okay, when I find out, found out exactly 
We had to go buy an emergency transfer from the Finance Committee. I believe it was uh, $22,000, $25,000 on uh, 25 new Scott Packs. Yep. Brand new. And then we made sure that they went out the next day and get them. You got off cheap. They're over five grand now. Mm -hmm. Scott Packs. Well, I, th okay, but I'm saying, okay. So are you in favor of the drone, the, the $5,000 drone? Yeah. It wouldn't be high on my list of things, but it, 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 it makes sense. Why send someone out if you don't have to? Okay. Well, what, what's you know the what I mean? union? I'm I, not going to support a drone. Or, or, we have a small, I'm not the Eddie, issue we have a small budget. We can't, we just can't afford to do stuff like well, that. Well, I understand. You guys are hanging up on the drone. I don't oh, want to talk about the drone. Hold on. Let me, let me, let me just stop you. Let me, let me just stop you. Listen. I don't have a problem with the winter training. I don't have problems with the guys going out in the winter if they feel it's okay to go out. This was put on them. Now, let me just say this. The regular guys, the regular guys, the eight guys that work there, most of them are saying they don't feel as though they're trained enough. They haven't gone in, let me finish, in the ice enough, okay, or in the, in the water enough. They're the ones, most of the ocean rescues are during the day. You're a Revere fireman, you might not be there. Rob, Rob works, he might not be there. A lot of the guys that are trained, like yourself and Robbie and, and all those other guys, might not be there for them. So that could be a problem. Those guys need, they, they need their training. They need to get trained because if there's a call, what happens if, Rob, Rob let me ask you this, what happens if you're working? Are you gonna be able to come in and? How is that different from what has been in place for the last 20 years? Well then why, this all came about because it was hard nosed on them that they had to do it. No, they, they took a stipend and everything. No, well, that's no. not how I understood it. So, and we no, had to make a no. decision. Read no. the SOG. No, it the, says no. specifically they do it if they're ready. If the, everything is right, if everybody is comfortable. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's all we're saying. And, and, and that's what the, the SOG that I put out says. Hey, 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 hang on, hang on. Okay, okay. Thank you, thank you. No, I'm done. Thank You're you. done. Okay. <laughs> Robbie, do you want to say something? Just gave you uh, yeah, some photographs. I showed, I, I showed okay, the picture, yeah. that's from the last 15 years. You can see snow in the photograph. You can see ice in the photograph. This is not necessarily what we find ourselves in, mm -hmm. but to say that we have not been equipped these last 20 years is an insult to me. I was I'm, I was formerly an assistant director of the Ocean Rescue Team. Eddie, former assistant director of the re uh, rescue team, Chief Waters, all of these people have been putting people out there negligently using this equipment. And now, 20 years later, we find out that we, are act we were actually putting people in jeopardy? Not in the least bit. Not at all. You can see the equipment in that photograph. I, Robbie, I, 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 again, I, I don't know. I don't, I, listen, I don't understand. Look, I have a list of equipment right here that he wants, okay, number one. Number two, do they have mandatory training? Who? Do, do, the, do the firemen have mandatory training for ocean rescue in the winter? Everything no. is voluntary. Okay, so the answer is no. Okay, the answer is no. Yeah. They need to have mandatory training if they are going to. If you if you're going to have an, that's my feeling. If you want to have them go out in the water in the ocean in the middle of the winter time, in a windstorm, uh, and and possibly get hurt, I don't have a problem with that. As long as they they have mandatory training and they're okay with it. Simple as that. And 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 if that's that's just my. My feeling on the whole. If, if I, if I may, for a moment, just to give you an idea of what's happened in the course of the year of 2016, the fire department responded 17 times to a, a report of a person in distress or an investigation for a possible person in distress. Mm -hmm. Of those 17 responses, 10 of those responses, not a single person or boat was put into the water. Okay. Of that, of the remaining responses. On one response, we pulled four people out of the water. Another response we, that we went on that we didn't go into the water were the two scuba divers. The harbor master had pulled them out of the water. Another rescue, we pulled one out of the water. Another call, we went out, but Dylan actually in a kayak had retrieved the individual and was bringing them to shore. So Dylan in the kayak, who, who, who's that? Dylan the Dylan kite is the kite surfer. Kite surfer. Is, is, was so, that in the winter time? This is year round. This spans from February and March of last year all the way through December. Okay. Okay. So this shows that not only myself, but also the senior personnel who are on duty are using common sense 
in making decisions. Have you and explained using that the facts you, that are presented to them. Have you talked to the regular guys about this? Absolutely. Maybe we can have uh, you talk about it. Ha has the crew heard these Excuse details? Excuse me. I, 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 okay. I've heard enough. Uh, okay. We've heard enough tonight on this. Uh, please sit down. Um, I've heard enough uh, discussion. There's a motion. Uh, I just don't want to uh, get back into this fire thing, but I just uh, uh, will take it under advisement. Yeah, look, I mean, again, this all started because we had to have a boat on the, on the, on the uh, warrant. I don't want a boat on the warrant. I'm not going uh, to, the motion was on the table, on the floor. T had made the motion. I seconded it. Um, I was ready to call the motion, but this was. Okay, no, no, was, no, no. Okay, this was motion, a well deserved. Mo the motion's been called. Okay, you want to call hearing, it? Up? We're hearing, I'm hearing more and more from the, mm -hmm. the firefighters mm -hmm. that I, I'm thinking more. But well, we haven't heard from all the firefighters. We just heard, true. and we're not we're not up here, by the way, to split the fire department, call no. them in or regular men. No. I just I, I guess what the board, in their wisdom, are trying to protect the firemen from getting hurt. That's very all. simple, and make sure you have the enough. Sufficient and let me equipment. assure you, so is the fire chief. But yeah. but we're hearing that they are in fact trained to training? a certain degree. Trained. Yeah, yes. they actually, but yes. they need mandatory so, training. That that's listen. They, they have to if you're gonna if you're gonna train the call guys or uh, the guys that like Rob and who's dedicated his a lot of time to it, Dennis, Eddie Stariti, that's fine. But the, all of them have to be. It has to be mandatory training. So, uh, then give me the funding to do that. Well, I, listen again, including salaries to cover them for the overtime to do the training and the backfill for those who are scheduled to work. So the, the selectmen have added another 1500 into that, but we can continue that conversation. I think the real issue is through the warrant right. article. Yeah. But, but, but I'd still like to finish because I've waited 35 minutes for my motion. Um, what, I, what I'm saying is that some of us are hearing from some people and now we're hearing from other people that it, it's confusing. I think we should really look at this later sure and that's why we have a fire chief the fire chief is here to give us his professional opinion and he does a great job with managing of the department I'd like to hear from everybody involved to be quite I honest. think chief. that the fire chief can bring you information from everybody I had a meeting this morning with all of the career staff I had a discussion on Saturday with the personnel who showed up for the training it was a voluntary training I have available to me and I can make available to you all the feedback that I received from them. What, one, one last question, if I may. Yes. Um, of all the firefighters, if some do not want to get involved, do they have that option? The career firefighters receive a stipend in their contract to perform the service. And if they choose not to perform? Then they're in violation of their contract okay. and so their duty to act. They all but, but there's a difference between refusing to do it and in their best judgment based on the circumstances saying it's not a safe evolution. I, I want to make that clear. That, that's, that's, a huge, that's a judgment call. That's a huge difference. I've told them before. I told them again this morning. I can't tell them today what their response will be tomorrow because tomorrow the weather's going to be different. The wind's going to be different. It's going to be a judgment call tomorrow. But whatever decision they make tomorrow if they can explain to me why they made the decision so I can explain it to you, I will back them 10,000%. Why don't we invite them all up? Okay, thank you. Are you calling thank in? You. Are you regular men? I want to, I'd like to have a meeting with all of them and get all their input during the day or whenever they can all make it at once, uh, 5 o'clock at night. I'd like, to get a, I'd like to get up their input. They're all here. One, one last question, Chief. If they're getting a stipend, then why don't you have mandatory training? They're getting paid for it. I can, I'm not allowed to mandate overtime by law. No, but I mean, they get, they're getting paid for it. They're getting a stipend. Not getting any money for rescue. These, these gentlemen don't get a stipend. No, I know they don't, and I, and I don't think who, that's who, right. Who doesn't get paid? The call guys. We have no stipend. 20 years. 20 years. But that's not, the, that's not the issue. The issue is if, the issue is if, yeah. if the regular guys are getting a stipend for it, then why don't they have mandatory training? They're getting paid. You mean the common don't get any, any, uh, any, they get their regular pay, I think. They, they get paid their hourly rate. They get their hourly rate. Their hourly rate for training too. For training also. Yeah. And how much is that? It varies by person.
What's that? That just historically, for the facts, we had two people die here back in 97, they drowned. There was no ocean rescue. We had a couple clotheslines and some life preservers, we threw them, and it was a bad situation. At that point, the call department, a few call guys, myself, Robbie, Eddie Streety, there are about six of us, we founded the Ocean Rescue. Mm -hmm. Had nothing to do with the fire department. We asked, they, the firefighters did not want anything to do with it, so the police graciously took us under their wing and Chief Waters ran it. Ultimately, it was transferred back to the fire department. Still today, the Ocean Rescue is comprised primarily of called firefighters who do not receive any stipend for anything to do with Ocean Rescue. The training has been provided typically by Ocean Rescue Systems in Portland, Maine. They come down, Joe Mokri, and comes down a couple times a year, and we funded that through the town, and they would train us on the rocks in the water. That's where we got our training, and then from that point it was train the trainer. Okay? But we did get training from Joe Mokri. The town bought the initial batch of equipment. Now you fast forward 20 years. We've been doing this over and over again. Mokri still comes down. That's the best training you can possibly get. He's the expert, all right? We still don't get any extra money for being, I'm an EMT. I work here. I work in EMT in Beverly. I work the streets. I know that is what I do. But I don't get a nickel to be on the ocean rescue. It's voluntary, all right? All these guys are volunteers. That's what we've been doing for a long time. So when we say we need some equipment, yeah, it would be nice to have some equipment. All right? But when you get into this whole uh, th what is training, what's adequate training, what's inadequate training, um, if you had Joe Mokri come down three times a year, it'd be golden. All right? And you wouldn't have to decide who's going to be on the team, who's not going to be on the team, because somebody who really wants to be on the team will be on it, as we've proven for 20 years. But you know, also, you know, we, we uh, gave Ocean Rescue $300,000 to get it started. Right. Remember that? Three hundred thousand dollars, and they had an old vehicle. I think you've been using. It was ten. It was ten thousand for some. We brought equipment. in the, Na the Navy SEALs to assist you in repelling. We did. I was there. Yeah, yeah. up and down, front, backwards and frontwards. Right. Those state police uh, that came in from New York, they were Navy SEALs. Absolutely. I got them down here for you, and, and I'll be honest with you. You know, we're just concerned. Okay, all we're concerned. This whole discussion is on safety, and I, you know, I, I don't, you know, I'm seeing the equipment. And the answers we were getting from the new fire chief, you know, and as I said earlier, he's from Linfield, and I don't remember an ocean up there next to Linfield. Okay, <laughs> you've got a whole brand new, you you've got a whole brand new uh, thing ball game here going on, especially with these uh, these people on the kites. We've had one major accident already no responsibility. over those rocks, and he huh? he got he got right, very badly injured. He was blown over from the doggy beach I, over to. I was there. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I was there too, and I, I couldn't believe he, he, he was lucky he, he, he didn't kill himself. Yeah. And I'm saying, I'm not here to be controversial. I just want you to see the real picture right. of where, who, who's actually on this team, okay. who wants to be on this team, and the people, ironically, who are on it aren't the ones that are financially benefiting like to, from I'd it. I'd like to get everybody on the same boat, the common and the regular men, too. Yeah. Yes, Brendan. Can I ask a point of clarification? It seemed like he just indicated that there was no money involved for Ocean Rescue and that these men volunteer. Can, can we get a clarification whether they're paid their chief, call chief. firefighter rate when they're doing Ocean Rescue or are they truly volunteering? So they're getting some money or no money at all? They are getting paid their hourly rate as call firefighters for training and responses. How much is that rate? It ranges from 1622 to 1750 an hour. But it's not volunteer. It is not volunteer. No. I just wanted to clarify. All right. All right. All right. In the so the motion the motion's the motion's on. been made. All right. Okay. Uh, do you want to rescind that motion until we have a chance to review this uh, uh, yeah. Monday night with the yeah. Finance Committee? Okay. And find yep. out. We know we got a $54,000 information on supplies you need, correct? And the boat's 120,000, which you're gonna need more because if you're gonna launch that during the winter, that has to be hanging over the wharf somehow. Some well, sort of, okay, the, the, am the, I, am I, I, okay, I, that's, that's. No, the, 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 the motion was for the boat. Right. I, I, and I'm, I'm comfortable with saying no to the boat right now. We don't have the money for it. Correct. Motion's been made to. T made the motion, I second it for discussion and turn it to this. Okay. But, 
Um, 45 minutes. Are you approving the 54,000 for the supplies? No, it's not the, no. it's not no. the, uh, it's the, the that's boat. not the warrant. No, just, the boat is the first one. Okay. So you don't want to purchase the boat. No, I'll put an article in for the, Correct. the townspeople. You don't want the, you don't want that article to go in the warrant and let the townspeople discuss and debate on the ocean rescue. No, it's got nothing to do with ocean rescue. Well, it is. It has, to, it has to do with the, the ocean rescue all, boat. The basis for ocean rescue is that boat. You can't have him go out in his, uh, his, uh, his harbor master's boat. That's, boy, I tell you, I've seen him out there by himself trying to collect a sailboat off of the, behind Kelly Greens. And I mean, I, I, he's very, very good, but he needs two bodies out there at least. And those, that boat is not ready for that. So wouldn't you rather put the article in for the, especially if it's a, such a, a, a debate, let the townspeople decide on the, uh, on the, uh, let, let it up to the people, let them decide whether they want an ocean rescue. The, the thing would, should the town of Nahant be involved with ocean rescue? That's the question. Yeah, See, sure they we, should. You know, they they should. They, these, they, I mean, I think they all agree on that. The point is, where are we going to find 150 grand for a boat? Let's add the maintenance in. Let's add the, um, all the other costs that go along with it. Where are we going to find? Let's, let's not talk 150. We're talking pro probably double it. All right. I just, I, I, I just think you, you, the point's being well missed here because if we don't get the equipment, the 54 or the 100 grand for the boat, I mean, it just, uh, it just, it, we can't send people out there in a storm. And usually it is a storm, windy the waves when they're out there. So, I, okay. So the motion's been made and second not to, um, I think Mr. Thibault would like to speak one more wait time. A minute, no, wait a minute uh, now. No, we've had enough. We, no more discussion. I don't want to shut it off. I'm but not, I'm not, I, I'm not going to. What are you going to say? Go ahead, okay, I just, I just want to say that in order, I, I'm supporting a no vote because I don't know how the boat is going to be used. Is this, you know, and I, when I say that, it's how, how are we planning on launching it? Where are we planning on launching it? Is it going to be an all year boat? You know, this came to, to my desk last Saturday. And I got you some quotes as quickly as I could, but I would like to have a discussion with everyone to find out what, how it is we intend to use this, and then we can spec it out more accurately. Well, we'd have to keep it in the water all year round, I would think, and then we don't have, a, we don't have floats in the, in the winter time. And this is it's exactly... Be more, yeah. it's, it's ridiculous. This it's is the exact discussion that I, I would need to have in order to confidently give you what you need. Well, I would think you have, to, you have to put that boat at the end of the wharf on the davit, and you swing it over and drop it down and launch it. That that's, would the be only the, place, that's the only place I could see during the winter months without having the float. That would be the absolute ideal. A, yeah, a, a, I mean, second, a second option would be to just have it at the top of the slip on a trailer, and we can just run it down and launch it. Well, but that said, like I, we this, haven't had this discussion. This is the discussion I started at 8 o'clock. <laughs> I want this to be further discussed. That's why I'm motioning no. Thank you, Robert. Motion's been made and seconded. All those in favor, saying, sing it by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? We can ask vote. Okay, so we will bring back the other three items uh, for the next meeting and continue those discussions. Thanks, Chief. Thank you, Chief. You do an All excellent right. job for the town. We appreciate it. Thank you. The next item is the um, FY 2018 budget review. Uh, we have had a uh, series of meetings and discussions. At the January 19th meeting, we sent a preliminary budget to the Finance Committee for their review um, and it's starting the process. Uh, this is obviously an ongoing developing process. What I appreciate this year is that the selectmen are playing uh, such a strong role in uh, the review of the budget and uh, the setting of budget items. So um, through our ongoing discussions, we've made some uh, modifications to the budget. Those items are the DPW budget, uh, there's been some contracted engineering services removed, the police capital, the cruiser was removed, um, and then the warrant article is something that uh, you know, we, we, we just talked about for the purchase of the ocean rescue boat. Um, the sum total of those removal items are about uh, 15700 I placed that in a, um, a line that can be used for warrant articles or other purposes at this point, and so we can continue to talk about that. 15000 15700 The savings from these items that uh, one, two, and three. 
So um, looking at it, the budget is probably the most efficient budget that I think I've ever seen. It's less than 1% increase. Um, you're about 0.71%, uh, uh, and that's incredible. This is a very, very lean budget. Um, we are using our, all of our free cash and all of our overlay, and this creates a bu uh, balanced budget with the items that you have asked me to include. So at this point, um, and again, I know this is an ongoing budget development, and we will have continued discussions between the selectmen and the FinCom. I'd like to actually um, put these items in there, pass it to the FinCom, and have them start working on these items uh, instead of the last items that they received on January 19th. <clears throat> John? Um, and I should say, are there any other additions or concerns that you have? Uh, I do have a concern. I'm looking at the warrant, yep. and I see that you want to borrow close to $250,000 from the MWRA. Correct. Why? Well, just it's uh, 134000 which is our traditional article. Uh, I, I need to know why. I mean, why are we borrowing money when we have money in the um, water and sewer enter uh, enterprise fund? I can send you a summary sheet on that. I just sent it to Brendan today. Um, what we're looking at is we have about $280,000 worth of uh, pump station repairs that need to occur. That came from the master plan. And so we can fund um, some of it this year using some of those funds, but we need the full amount uh, for funding the rest of it. And then we also have, I guess I'll point to this document. It's tucked in there. Um, the FinCom had asked when you come Monday if you could have a list of additional concerns. If you look at the items in the middle, um, section four, A, B, and C, they identify um, what I consider to be items that we've talked about, so I put it in here for your consideration. Uh, the sewer pumping station, $282,000. Bear Pond pumping station, $155,000 and Ward Castle Fox Roads, about 200000 to deal with the drainage. So those are items that we need to continue to talk about. But the MWRA money, mm -hmm. um, that will pay the 282 uh, for the um, sewer pumping, excuse me, I was, excuse me, I got ahead of myself. So that's the sewer pumping station. That'll be the 120000 and the 60000 that we traditionally uh, fund as well each year. Yeah. MWRA, we, we spent all of the money on the last two projects, which are Swallow Cave and Wharf Street water projects. So no engineering costs, no, I mean, I need to, I'd like to see a detailed, I'd I can, like to see a detailed. I can provide you penny, that. Uh, to the penny from last year. Also, I want to see last year's uh, because we do have money and the pumping stations. We have how much do we have in the water and sewer enterprise fund? Half a million bucks? Roughly? Or what do we have in the, the fund total? For what purposes? I mean, we have reserves and then we have um, borrowings and capital. Just reserves. Reserves. Um, Water and sewer you're looking at? Oh, right here. Okay, so for reserves, we have $211,000, uh, yeah, $211,000. I guess my concern is, you know, I understand it's 0% interest, but I'd like to see what we're spending it on if it's just, you know, being spent on an engineer or if Certainly. it's being spent on a, a vehicle or, you know, I want to know where every penny goes. Um, I think that it's only fair to the people in town because once that money is allotted, you can spend it pretty much on anything that has to do with water and sewer. Well, certainly. Um, I, again, provided uh, Brendan Ward, uh, chairman of the Finance Committee, information such as that, so I'll send it to you tomorrow. Okay. Um, um, and it does itemize. So, um, do you want something? I just I have a question, and again, in preparation for our meeting on Monday, if you recall, that when we recommended approval of this article last year, we recommended it with reservations. Um, because of some emergent work. And but with that statement, you had, you had also promised a long-term forward-looking plan 
for capital improvements, et cetera, to the water sewer infrastructure. Yeah. What you provided is a historical look in what's currently needed, um, which is part of the part of the answer, but what we're looking to is a longer term plan looking ahead so we can figure out which parts should be funded through borrowing, which parts can be funded from the reserve, and which parts can be funded from the operating budget. Yep. So the assumption that we need this loan every year is based on a, it's based on an assumption. And we're, it's fine, it's zero percent, that's great, it's still going to be paid back at some point, we're just adding principal to it year after year after year. So. That was the reason we, we, had a, we had a long series of discussion about this during last year's budget cycle, and you know, we acquiesced, frankly, to pass it, to, to recommend passing it, but with reservation. There, there are many other ways to pay for this stuff without borrowing, so just because it's free money does not mean we should take it. Well, I think that, you know, that's why we, we're into the, still in this fis fiscal year, and we need to know where, where it's all going, and I, I think that's what I just asked him for, and that's a good point. Well, you, 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 you deliver a plan on the hot top plan, sidewalk and streets. Yep, and we have one for sewer and water. the same for the pipe, the infrastructure, because I think, you know, yep. some of these, uh, like Willow Road and the traffic going down Willow Road, and those pipes are so light, we're, uh, we're breaking gas mains and water mains on that street and Emerald Road. It's like a, it's like a, uh, a checkerboard square out there with the uh, patches. So I think maybe we need to get, and when you do that, when you make up a plan to replace the water sewer mains, you should also have the gas company in and replace their mains as well. Yeah. Okay. I mean, and that's that would be the smart way to, to do it, so that we we dig up these streets once, not keep digging them up and patch a patch and here and there. And I would, I would start with Willow and Emerald because that's yeah. where all the pipes are breaking. I will say to your point, Ken, is that I've been working very closely with Dennis Ball, the new uh, DPW director, uh, and this last couple of weeks he's been loading me up with a lot of his master plan um, requests, uh, both water and sewer, and that's where some of this information is coming from. So let me work with him to see how far he can project, given the fact that he's only been with us since June. Um, Excuse so me for interrupting. I, I, I see you. This, did you people want to address the board? I didn't hear you. Just wanted to see what was going on in town. Oh, oh fine. I, I saw you sitting. Usually, somebody. Uh, I didn't want you waiting all night. Just have people come to you know see what you have to say. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. They're all sitting home on two dollars. Yeah. So you can itemize everything that. I can. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, and I'll, I'll get to that list. All right. Let's go. All right. Now, uh, which brings me to. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> who's running this meeting? Fincom or us? I don't know. Let's go. Yeah. I, I, I'm listening and I'm hearing, you know, and I, and I hear Richie's uh, comments about the gas company. Um, we, uh, we belong to the Shade Tree Trust. Did you know that? No. Oh, okay. We belong to the Shade Tree Trust, and the town in the Hunt does, amongst other uh, communities. If there's a gas leak that's killing trees, and that's a big concern now. I guess there was somebody out in the front of the town hall the other day discussing it. Um, the guy, the, actually the guy that uh, did the, uh, the, the, the W.Y. Grace, the lawyer that went after them, is going after the gas company for all their leaks. And I would really advise you to get a hold of this because we're, we're a member of it and they'll replace, they'll, they'll replace the trees. They'll make the gas company to replace the trees that were killed by ga gas leaks. And there's tons of them in the hunt. I understand we lost the whole row back here on Central. Okay, right so, town hall okay, so that if that's the case, then you need to get a hold of them and... Here you go. All right, that's the whole... Yeah, I have it here too. Yeah, okay. Um, that was actually brought to me to my attention by uh, nice. a former... Uh, um, yeah, that's for you. Uh, yeah, I get that. Uh, former uh, selectman Mike Manning, because uh, he was part of that whole thing when it when it when it happened, yeah. and it's a. So if if we're losing trees because of that, I would expect the gas company to pay for them, and you got to let this guy know because it's my uh, understanding that he's going to sue the gas company, yeah. and you know he's going to make them accountable for it. There's gas leaks all over in the hunt, so. Yeah, I think it may be the same person who submitted a warrant petition that we'll be talking about on the right. warrant. Right, okay. Uh, the second thing is, is I gotta tell you, I'm really disturbed by this, the, the Board of Selectmen didn't know this, that 
Um, we're losing 40,000 gallons of water a day. And Dennis is on top of it, um, taking care of it. And this should have been taken care of a year ago. And I, I don't understand why we didn't know that. Um, when I came here, that problem was still um, it was, was in place. And we've been trying to solve that issue since. And so that's that's a day. That's 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 roughly ten thousand bucks a month. Mm -hmm. I mean, who's we have to pay for that? I mean, it, is it coming out of the water and sewer enterprise fund? I mean, I don't want to start bleeding because you know we have a, a, a water leak that wasn't taken care of, and whether it's the the, the, the meter at the uh, at the rotary that's the metering is wrong or there is truly a, a, a water leak. And I know Dennis, Dennis is on top of it, and I really, yes, yes. I'm thanking him for it because he's, he's really doing a good job on, on, on it. But oh. I don't understand how we didn't know this, uh, that there was a 40,000 gallon water we, a day leak. How do we know, leak. How, 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 how'd you know that, 40,000 gallons a day? Who, who told you that? I, I just, I, I, well, I'm not going to. Well, hold on, Dennis. I, you know, do you know about this? I do. Again, it was in. It was a problem that was in place when I got here, and they've been working on it for a couple of years you before mean, I got here. You need here. to tell me since you've been here for a year and a half, mm -hmm. we've been losing forty thousand gallons of water a day. We've had a large um, loss or unaccountable water, and we've done uh, leak detections three times last year. We're doing a leak detection this year. And each one of them only comes up with a small amount of, of leaks. And so we can't figure out why it's unaccountable. It, it could be the meters, too. It, I mean, could, it be. could be. The, it could be the meters. It could be. Um, it could be the thickness of the pipes going into the meters. They might be calculated wrong. But this is a real issue. And, and i got to tell you, I'm, I'm really upset that we didn't know about it. I didn't know about it. And well, that's the first I've heard about it. Because I'm the type of person that, you know, I want answers. Yesterday, 40, <laughs> that's just the way I am. So, gallons a day. That's an awful lot of water. As Enzo say, it, it, it may just be a meter issue, um, but that's something we should be trying to, definitely trying to get a hold of. Well, we're paying NWRA mm -hmm. that money. I mean, they're charging us for forty thousand gallons of one we don't have. Yep. So why wouldn't you bring that up to the board and advise us on the board when you meet us? <laughs> It's an ongoing pursuit. Again, we do leak detest detecting and... No, no, yep. I hear what you're saying, but how come you didn't bring it to the board? And say, well, listen, we're losing 40,000 gallons. Because this was a issue that had been here two years before I got here, so I, my assumption is that you had actually known <laughs> Is there about any it. other issues that, uh, that uh, were here two years ago that we, we should know about it now? Is something else that I don't know? Are we paying for cell phones? Or I mean, is there something else that I don't know? I mean, 40,000 gallons a day, I, I mean, what the hell is going on? That, you know how much money that is? I mean, we're getting charged for? I don't understand it. And we got a brand new superintendent of public. I imagine he's all over it. No, he is. Yeah, he's probably trying to figure it out. And it sounds like the meter problem down at the end of the causeway. Well, you just can't lose 40,000 gallons a day unless someone's running their water. I mean, I, I, I mean, unless they got a couple giant swimming pools off the coast here somewhere, I, you know. Yeah, it's, it's been difficult to um, determine where it's coming from. One of the things that we're talking about is putting meters in different locations so we can isolate out where it is. Um, it could be as simple as a sprinkler system. Yeah, but this has been going on for since you've been here, a year and a half. It's been going on for about four years. You're on top no, of it, no, Dennis, no, right? No, 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 no. You knew about it when you first came here. It was brought to my attention. That's why we did the three leak detections. All right, I, I, I don't want to, okay. I, I, I don't want to discuss it. So let's, let's find out what we're doing here, Superintendent. Let's send down some cameras, some meters, see if the meters at the end of the causeway is, is calibrated correctly. When we had this leak 25 years ago, 30 years ago, we found that the, that the meter at the causeway was incorrect. And the Lynn one, and the Lynn, Lynn at NWRA as well was incorrect. They, they, we configured it, we did it correctly, and we billed them back for the money they took from us. Has anybody, let me ask you a question before I, because I'll forget. Has anybody checked the water main coming into the hunt on the beach? They, they did blow a hole through that, you know, uh, when they were doing the beach over. It was, they, they 
Yeah, Big Safe mocked it wrong, and they drilled the hole through it, and it was like a geyser. So, so this, this is our next step. Right now, we're in the process, meaning yesterday, today. So, and I'm uh, glad you're doing it, Dennis. We're, we're in the process of, uh, we have a leak detection company in town. That's the first step. We don't know it's a leak, all right? We, that's one of the, 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 uh, the avenues that we're looking at. It could be the, it could be bad meter. It could be a bad read at the, at the front end of the right. system. We're in the process right now, very, very aggressively, trying to solve this problem. We're gonna, we'll address it uh, once we have some hard answers and early next week uh, from at least the leak detection uh, folks um, who, who use very, very uh, sensitive uh, technical equipment. Uh, we'll, we'll have, we'll have a better idea. Can, can, you, can you brief us on it after you're done, the Are Board you? of Selectmen? Will you brief us on it? Oh, as I, you're going along? yeah. I'll, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll put together a report. Is, is we'll put together a report. And aware. also, you and uh, our contracted engineer are working on that? Correct. Okay. All right. Thank How you. Many, you got a couple of engineers down there, right? We, we have as consultants? Yes, we do. You know, bring them down and ask them to help you. Uh, yeah. They're, they're here. You know, I, I'm, I'm in touch with them on a daily basis. Paying a lot of money for these consultants. All right. All right. You all set? Yep. So look, you, looking at the budget, um, you, again, we have a list that uh, the, the FinCom would like to see, and so please take a look at this and see if you want to add anything more to it. But it also gives you kind of a view of some of the um, stresses that we have. Okay, yep. Anything else on changes for the budget at this point? Realizing, of course, this is a dynamic budget, and will, there will be other changes <coughs> in the future. I'm not again, sure. I just like I'm to not see sure it's di dynamic. Yeah, you're the, you're, 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 I'd just like to see... Um, mm -hmm. The pumping station in Bear Pond, the main pump is under, underperforming at 25% output. I, I can tell you that when I, when I was a kid, the Bear Pond um, was very deep. It was considered bottomless. I'm assuming that it's 25% output, and I'm just assuming this because it's probably under a bunch of muck. Yeah, I, th I think, Dennis, if you want to speak to that. But if it's in muck, if it's sitting in muck, it's not going to pump anything. Correct. I mean, we need to do a little bit of engineering in here. So I think, no, that, that, that whole drainage, I mean, we, we, we appropriated $20,000 from the um, uh, grant, from the, grant, from the uh, uh, open space master plan to deal with that, to, to clean the drainage, you know, to do the drainage. And Bear Pond has to be dredged. It has to be completely dredged of all of the, uh, uh, whatever's in there, golf balls, muck, everything. And it, you know, it's not as deep as it used to be. Right. So part of the, part of the system, which is the, the low end of the system uh, from, a, from an engineering standpoint, is, is the gravity pipe that runs from Bear Pond out sure, yeah. in the back of the ocean view. That's the, the clapper valve. The, the, right. So that, that, that bill, uh, clapper valve, all right, right. Uh, is, is not functioning uh, the way it should be, primarily because it, it gets clogged on a regular basis. Um, Coughlin had designed uh, another uh, uh, system, end system, yeah. so that they may be more appropriate. Um, if I can get that functioning, um, we could we, that pond would run a little bit more efficiently than it is. Uh, but the, the pumps, the electric pumps that are there now are undersized for that, for the job we're asking it to do. They're still running, though. Oh, yeah, they're running. Okay. They're running. But the, like I said, the GPM from a volume standpoint yes. is, is substantially lower than what we need. Okay. So these are the items that uh, Dennis has been bringing forward in the last couple of weeks. And so we'll scurry to try to get them funding. Um, what Some of these items you'll see that when I give you the information on MWRA, um, water and sewer repairs, and then uh, sewer valves, yeah. all of those will roll into that as to what he's using this year and future years. So you can see that he needs these, these fundings desperately in order to keep these um, dealing with this, what I consider to be benign neglect. Well, and the sewer, the, the pumping station, you're talking about the main station at uh, Lowlands, the, correct? The 280? Yeah. That's for That's the entire system. A, yeah. a, bulk of, a bulk of the 280 is about 130 ish. The yeah, building's falling yeah. apart. That is, is for, the, is for the, the critical infrastructure that's down at, at, at Ward Road. So he's um, deal you're dealing with that now, though. I can't understand why this was neglected for so long. I really can't. I mean, it. It just, and it just turns into a nightmare at the end of the day, so. 
So the, the pumping stations that he's talking about, as you go around town, you'll see that there's a... Um, I know, I know yeah, where they are. You go into the ground yeah, and, they and they're there. So yeah. there's a series of them that have, through the master plan, improvements that are needed. And this is what he's bringing forward. There are 11 of them. 11? Right. Uh, 11. I'd like to take a tour of the, uh, the main... Ward Road? Ward Road. Um, I think it's a good, good concept. Station. I've been in there a million times, but I'd just like to see what it looks like now. Um, so we can move forward. And then the Ward Castle Road, Fox Hill Road's drainage system, $200,000. That's, again, a, that's a conceptual number. Uh, right. I, I mean, again, we don't know what that's going to cost, but this, is, this should be top priority. This has been neglected for so long. They're underwater. I mean, I've actually seen water bubbling up from the, the catch basins. I don't understand why they haven't jetted them. I don't understand well, why they've, they've, they've been jetted. Uh, the problem okay. is, is that I, we can identify. I can identify right now um, one of the pipes that are broken. That okay, have, good. Collapsed. So good. Yeah. So part of what we're yeah, doing is part of what we're doing is phase three. We'd like to find grants that would allow us to um, do some of the improvements that we're talking about here as well for the Castle Road, Ward Road area, but. Um, Again, going back to the budget, uh, these improvements have been incorporated. Uh, I will pass this on to the Finance Committee as a balanced budget with $11,593,000, uh, and that's about a 0.71% increase, less than 1%. I got to tell you, I'm not, I, I'm not ready to vote on this until I see, I want to see the actual figures of that. Um, Certainly. Um, that's just my opinion I, of the, uh, the water and sewer enterprise fund. I mean, the uh, MWIRA borrowing. They asked for something last year. They asked several things, and 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 because uh, I attend their meetings and they're very comprehensive and they're very good. Uh, you know, we do, they they deserve that. So, and I deserve it too because I want to see what the what, what all this money is going to. We can certainly provide what we can provide, given again that uh, Dennis has been here since June. No, He's I know that. Doing a good I job. Know. Okay. Okay. Yep. All right. Um, then looking at the warrant, um, what you'll see in your section of your binder is that we have a small list of items I'd like to walk through and, and talk about. The Behind that is a list of, or the, a draft of the warrant, and you can see the highlighted articles that have been um, added. Um, some of them are petitions, some of them are the routine capital items that we deal with. Um, and uh, this is a work in progress. Um, if you can give me some direction on this potential new article list, I can then finalize that. And uh, for now, at least we'll, I can shuffle the articles around so we have an order to them and then pass it on to the uh, Finance Committee and then continue to work on it. I move that engineering costs um, not include, be not included in the warrant. Uh, engineering costs. Where's that? Potential Number new one. articles. Potential articles. Potential new articles. We well, see. Do you want to go through them all, T, first, or you want to just? I'd like to do them one at one a time. One at a time. Okay. All right. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Discussion? Discussion. You want a discussion? Or? Yes. This is this calls for a review of all street signs, speed limits, traffic patterns in the town, $35,000. Uh, and I'll use this for all of the articles that I'm not in favor of. Moving on. Why would you want to? Why would you not have that done? I mean, for thirty-five thousand, have a study and get all the well, I'm stop still, signs and the one ways and get it all. Because the police can do it. They're allowed to do it now. Charlie Baker. I mean, Governor Baker has given the towns the rights to post speed limits. I mean, to to, to me, the, the cops can go around and tell us where the, the stop sign should be, um, where the how, what the speed limit should be. Plus, I believe I was talking. Oh, I I'm, sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. At thirty-five thousand dollars, given the fact that everyone's tightened their belt, it was my first sit-down downstairs with Police Fire Public Works. That the town administrator, everybody tightened their belts. I can't see thirty-five thousand dollars. Okay. And I, you, you heard mine. So. All that, those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Motion passed unanimously. Coast Guard Housing. Um, I'd like to. Yeah, we can just we can leave that on as a um, leave placeholder. That on. Yeah, placeholder. Okay. Well, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll 
I'm sorry. I, I just want to remind everybody, tomorrow is the last day, right? Yes. For the, uh, for the survey. We'll try to get them back, and uh, we'll go through them. Okay. Willow Road extension, um, connect with Gardner Road. I move that that not be included in the warrant. I'll second that for discussion. Discussion. This was a price tag of approximately $25,000 the first time I saw it. So I'm not in favor of that at all. And again, with the tightening of the belts, I'm very proud of everybody doing really working hard to make us look good monetarily. So I, I vote not to move that. Archie, are you going to vote? No, you guys wrote it. Well, no, the vote's on the, the motion. Okay. The motion's been made and seconded by, right? Yeah. yeah. No problem. All those in favor, single by saying aye. 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 Opposed? I'll oppose that one. Right. Short Beach Master Plan. Um, I'd like to move that on. Not, not met to the warrant, but to the next discussion. Sure. Okay. It, it, there's $7,500 left or something. Yeah, so um, the DPW director who is gone now, and I have talked about the fact that there are some uh, experimental methods that have been recommended by the Conservation Commission that we're going to try in next spring and summer. And it involves, for instance, um, pumping salt water onto the area to kill anything but the seagrass and then actually pulling out the dead stalks using summer help. So instead of just pulling the whole thing up, and starting all over again, at least giving that one more try, and we think yep. we can do it for the remaining funds. Okay. Next time. You know where the mistake was made there. You know where yeah. the mistake was made, right? Yeah. The loan. Yep, go ahead. The, the weeds. Um, I don't know if the salt water is going to kill them. <laughs> you can try. Yeah. The East Point Lodge Park, I move not to include this in the warrant. What, what, what article is this? Uh, installation of a split rail fence. Around the periphery of the uh, of Lodge Park, gentlemen. I'll second that for. Uh, um. <laughs> gentlemen, hmm? you go out there. We've lost two uh, college professors out there. We've got to have a fence. So if, when people walk up there, there's sign posted and there's a, some sort of a split rail fence just for, for you know, just to look to say uh, you know no trespassing beyond this point. I mean, with, you could right now you walk right off. They've taken the cement wire out. You walk up there, you could walk right down on the, uh, on the cliffs. I know that, but, the, you know, and believe me, I had to, you know, we used to take uh, hikes out there with the Boy Scouts, but a split rail fence is not going to stop them from just going right over it. I mean, the I've point is not to, not to stop them. The point is to put something up to delineate between the roadway and the walkway and the cliffs. Well, if you've got something else you want to put up there, let me know. I, I just... It was, you know, it was an idea. Jeff wanted to say a split rail fence, like the one down the beach. I mean, I just put a, we could put a rope up there. I mean, one of those rope deals, rope a rope, a dope a rope. I mean, whatever you want to do. I mean, you, you, I mean, you leave nothing. You have an, you, you're, you're, you're looking for another action. Well, I think they, could, they, they, I mean, again, I think they could have an action just by jumping the fence. I mean, I. Don't, I don't know what to, I mean, $24,000 is a lot of money for a fence, you know, just to deter people, and it's, it's probably going to get, you know, it'll... If it prevents a child or someone going out there that's not new to the, that doesn't really know this area, and go down a little bit, just like those professors, and they slipped and fell into that, where we used to do jackknives off, I mean, we know that, you know, right now there's nothing up there. Nothing. I, mean, I, I, mean, no, I know. I know. I've been up there. Well, that's, uh, okay. I have no problem. I mean, the walkway, the, the walkway around Lodge Park is a, quite a good, a good distance from the, the actual rocks. But all right. no, I, well, I mean, right. Brendan, no problem. Brendan wants to. Yeah, Brendan. Just a question and point of clarification: Is this something that could be included in a CPC article that could be paid for by the Community Preservation Act, as it is a recreation in an open space? And if there is that big a concern. If we haven't procedurally missed the deadline to include this as part of the Community Preservation Article Acts, it might go to some of those funds that we haven't expended uh, great deals from, uh, especially, I, I believe, um, open spaces could probably be used as preservation and maintenance of open space. 
that way it won't be coming out of the, the general fund and will be in a, in a fund that we have uh, considerable uh, balances in because we don't have suitable projects to spend in. That's a terrific point. Yeah. Would you look into that, please? Certainly. I'll talk with CDC. Thank you. That would be the, um, the way to go. I, I, I don't disagree with it, Richie. Yeah, I no, just, no, no, no. That's fine. I just don't want to. Just, I just don't want to lose someone up there again. Yeah. So. Okay. Next. Can we vote on that? Well, we can vote to transfer it over to the preservation. Uh, yeah. Let me look into our report okay, back. Good. Okay. Let's yep. get back. Okay. And then Bayview Street that uh, I passed on to the individual, the petitioner, and asked them to submit a petition. Okay. Okay. And then the cemetery expansion, you have in there a letter from the Cemetery Commission uh, just identifying that they don't feel that uh, it's warranted at this time. I, I'm actually on the Cemetery Committee and talking with David Wilson, uh, who's really knows a lot, of, a lot about the cemetery, knows everything about the cemetery. Um, he feels as though there's another 15 years in there left. Um, and that's without even taking, if you look at uh, Kennedy Court, at the, uh, the end of Kennedy Court, we own that too. That could be part of it. So that would be quite a few lots. I think moving uh, the cemetery expansion is gonna be uh, difficult. It's, it's, it's way too much money. I mean, three million 15 years ago is gonna be 10 million now. So. Uh, uh, six million at least. So I think it's, I'd like to see that disappear for now. And um, could the Cemetery Commission assist um, the well, town they, with an evaluation of what it would cost to do some of the expansion? Well, I think the expansion, no, I think that would be something that you'd have to probably, we'd have to hire somebody to, to tell us what it's going to cost. I mean, uh, uh, someone that builds cemeteries. I think uh, there's one thing that we are asking for um, to protect the equipment. We're going to get a new Kubota this year, I believe. And that equipment stays outside all went along the gator and so forth, right behind the spin drift. We own that land. And I would like to see if, get a price on putting up a, a building, a, a, a shed or a garage that we can store that stuff in. I'm actually working with the DPW director on that. Okay, issue. good. Only because, you know, if you get, if the Kubota lasts 20 years, it's going to last 30 years if it's, if it's covered. Why can't, why can't they store that equipment over in Bailey's Hill? That, well, they can, that, but. That's then, what I think the DPW director is recommending. Well, the only thing is then he has to, in the wintertime, when he has a burial, he has to go over to, all the way over to Bailey's Hill, get it out. Yeah. All right. Um, you're talking about in the in the fort itself? Okay. Well, I, I, you know, again. The, I mean, I don't know. I think it would be easier yeah, we to have stir a, it in there. We have a storage area in the back of the DPW yard that uh, he could put that in there, and that would cut his commute a little. But um, uh, the DPW director feels that it's best to have all those in one location for yeah. protection purposes, so he he's talking now about putting the Kubota there. But I'll come back with a report on that. Okay. I mean, I've just seen, I've seen the, uh, the outcome of leaving equipment outside. Agreed. Yeah, just crazy. So the cemetery expansion, how would you like to handle that? Take that off? Take it off. I would say take it off. Anybody? I agree. Yeah. Okay. Okay, great. Then what I'll do is I'll modify the warrant. I'll try to shuffle an order that is traditional with our warrants um, and then send it on to the FinCom and give you a copy. Do you have pictures of the warrant on the front page of the annual report? Do you have a picture of what's going on there? Oh, no, I don't. Do you have any ideas? No, I thought we submitted it already. No, not the annual report. Would you, the annual reports, yeah, you've submitted the, the report themselves. We're putting together the larger document. But for no, the- I'm talking about the final report, the annual yep, report, yep. the cover, exactly. and the backside. Yep, that's, do you have any recommendations on No, we, we submitted it already, we discussed it. I was wondering wh wh who, oh. what was the final decision? Wh when would, who discussed it? Yeah, I'm not sure when we did that, but uh, maybe we did. Let me check. I didn't discuss it, but maybe the chairman does. No, I'm not meaning anything by it, but no, maybe it's no, something I thought, you would want I, to. I thought someone talked to me about it, I forget who. And I said, yeah, and then they were going to call and ask permission to do it. I, yeah, I mean. That's the last I heard of it. I, I just. I mean, if you said fine, that would be fine. Oh, no, 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 no. I, listen, I, it's not up to me. It's up to the three members of the board. Well, we can discuss if it's just, yeah. this could be top secret. No, 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 no. It's not top secret. It's just, it's just something that we usually, you know, someone we honor that has. Um, yeah, that's right. So I that's know. why it's top secret. 
let, let me reach out to you and we'll have a conversation about options and then I'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, sure. we'll settle I, on that, okay? Thank you. Um, yeah, no, someone yeah. called me and I said, yeah, I, I thought that they contacted oh, I'm sure it was fine. Yeah. Just we also have two options. You have the back page and we've been using that and it looks great, so. All right, so let me make those changes. Um, moving along, the classification study. Um, we've only made one mi or two minor changes to the classification study, and those have to do with the request of the DPW director. Um, he has public works laborer part-time and public works laborer part-time skilled. That uh, These are the seniors that come back each summer. They do a great job for our town. They've been coming back so, oft, uh, so many times that they're at their ceiling, and so he'd like to raise the ceiling on that from $14 for the uh, non-skilled to $16 and for the skilled from $15.50 to $20. And that's just the upper edge of it. That doesn't mean that they'll be paid that. It just means that it gives them more flexibility within that range. So other than that, the classification study is the same as it was last year. Well, the classification study um, we didn't accept last year. That was voted down at a selectman's meeting. So that went forward as Article 5. It's, it's, it was voted by the town, so all we're doing is taking the same information that the town voted and rolling that forward with those modifications. But we, it, it, the, the classification plan was voted on. The study wasn't. We, 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 that was shot down at a selectman's meeting. So I'll make a motion that we, um, I move that the Board of Selectmen vote to accept the classification of the, uh, that recommended by the, um, DPW director, and to place it on the town meeting tomorrow for action by the voters of Nahan. I don't want to, I'm, I am not, in, not going to accept a classification study that the Board of Selectmen turned down last year, and possibly it was snuck into the warrant last year, in your, in, you know, your way of thinking. We, salary and classification plan, mm -hmm. right here you have salary and classification study. We can make that change. Okay. You know, the plan is accepted every year. The study was not. Mm -hmm. So I would like to see, absolutely, I, I think they deserve it. Um, Motion has been made. Is there a second? Second. Discussion? All those in favor, single by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Okay, now we have a series of revolving funds that you just have to uh, approve. These are traditional revolving funds. And then we also have, as part of the vote, um, just raising the uh, amounts within two of the revolving funds, so um, cemetery and COA. Well, what that just does is allows them to spend to a higher cap if they raise the funds. So you've got a motion in front of you. Okay, I'll move that the Board of Selectmen vote to place the following revolving funds on the annual town meeting warrant. Cemetery, Council on Aging, School, Student Activity, and Recreation. And further to amend the authorization of the OA revolving fund um, from a not to exceed 7,000 to a not to exceed 10,000 for activities for the seniors, pursuant to MGL 44, section 53E, uh, e, and the cemetery revolving fund from a not to exceed 12,000 to a not to exceed 20,000 for maintenance operation, capital improvements of the Green Lawn Cemetery, pursuant to MGL 44, section 53E, and a half. Second. Discussion? All those in favor, single by saying aye. 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 Uh, and we do have a candidate for the town nurse. Um, again, Ann Hudson uh, had to leave us, so we have posted the position. Mm -hmm. And we have um, an excellent candidate that has come forward, has been vetted by both Ann and um, John Coolin, and they highly recommend Dina Kivett. And so if you're willing to Confirm I move the Board opponent. of Selectmen vote to confirm the recommendation of the town administrator for the hiring and appointment of Dina Kivett as public health nurse. Motion has been made. Is there a second? I'll second for discussion. Discussion. Um, was there any other candidates involved? No. No. There wasn't, uh, huh? no. And we, else applied? we really went out and tried to get candidates. Uh, not, not that Dina's not a great candidate, it's just that. No, I'm we, sure, we, but it, I know that yeah. we have a, a school nurse. I, I thought that was, she was going to. Right at it. Okay. I, I don't know who she is. I'm sure she is fine. So, yep. The motions. Uh, any other discussion? Vote. No. Motion has been made. Any other further discussion? All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Motion carried. Great. Thank you. Welcome.
So um, we have the quarterly reports. They're a little late, uh, but Deb did her best to get them as quickly as she can. Um, I'll be giving the quarterly reports to the FinCom on Monday, and we'll walk through those there. But uh, you have them with you. Um, generally, the revenues are doing very well right now. We're where we should be on most revenues, but we do have some spikes in revenues, which are great to see. Um, as far as expenditures, we do have some of the um, various budget lines that are under stress. Right now, the Board of Selectmen Professional Services and the Fire General Expense lines are um, under a little stress. The reason the Board of Selectmen uh, line is under is because we had Woods Hole uh, group that came out of that, the rodent control, the audit, and then um, we had some legal action uh, just doing an interpretation on the Town Administrator Act. So that put us in a stress point, but what we're going to do is we'll monitor that and we'll try to use other budgets to keep that from going to a reserve fund transfer. How did Woods Hole uh, come out of the selectmen's budget? We had agreed to um, pay for 4500 out of our existing budgets, and so that 4500 came out of that account. Okay, because I thought we could put in for a reserve fund transfer. Yeah, so um, this was the amount that we were going to cover. Yeah. Okay. And then um, for the fire, uh, general expenses, uh, we had added four call firefighters because uh, we were down significantly. Yep. And so the medical training and equipment uh, put that under stress there. But uh, again, we'll, we'll work to stay out of reserve fund transfer area. Town Council's a little stressed, but uh, that's, we should be about 55% and he's at about 64%. So I think we'll do fine as we go through the end of the year. So generally, all looking good. Um, the revenues look great. Uh, again, I'll give a report to the FinCom on Monday night. Any questions? If not, um, we have two use requests. Uh, the first is the Nahant Library Science Tellers on 2-22-17. We have a motion on that. Yeah. Someone to read yeah, the I'll request from the Nahant Public Library, Enzo? Okay, I'll move that the Board of Selectmen approve the event request by the Nahant Library Science Tellers Program 22217 at 10 a.m. at the town hall. Motion to present. Second. Second. Discussion. All in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Carry. Excellent. Thank you. The second one is the we have a wedding ceremony that wants to happen up at Lodge Park, uh, and that's on uh, 6317. I move the Board of Selectmen approve the event request by Laura D. Benedetto for a small wedding at Lodge Park, 6317 at 5 p.m. Motion has been made. It is a second. I'll second it. Motion to second it. Discussion? All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 Motion carries unanimously. And congratulations to the new couple. Um, and that's all I have for you tonight. Okay. Oh. Okay, is there any other business in front of the board? We do have executive session. Um, we can also move that. It's it maybe a little late, but it's up to you. We can move it to Monday. Uh, no, let's go into executive session. We're going to be going into executive session. We will not be coming back out to regular session. And the sole purpose of uh, the executive session is, uh, is performance evaluation and also um, contract, uh, contract negotiations. Contract, contract negotiations with a one of our major accounts. What's that? I can't see that. Town Hall closed President's Day, February 20th. Oh, yeah. The Town Hall is closed February. Well, we got a meeting before that. Yep. We got oh. a meeting. We got a meeting before that, right? Tom, this is we, this is the second of February, right? Yep. So we. So we're going to be meeting on the sixteenth. Oh, well, we can say it again. We're, 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 we're going to be meeting on the eighteenth. Yep. We're over enthusiastic about that holiday. Wait a minute. Let me see. This is February. I wish someone would change. Do me a favor. Oh yeah, you need two seventeen. Yep. Would okay. you put the calendar for two seventeen in there? Yeah. Well, okay. anyway, I'm looking at the wrong dates. <clears throat> You have a vote on the executive session? Okay, I move that the board go into executive session. Motion has been made. Second. 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 Discussion? All those in favor, signal by saying aye. 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 We will not be going back into regular session. Good night. God bless. Hey.